This conference will now be recorded. Okay, we will call to order the meeting for the St. Peter Local Board of Appeal and Equalization. It is Monday, excuse me, Tuesday, May 19th, 2020. It is 6 o'clock p.m. And uh, as previously stated, uh, we will, Lorna, if you can give us a little background, and uh, we will go from there. Sure. First order of business on the addendum that Barb sent to you, um, the second parcel on the list owned by Paul Caveney would be parcel 19020600. Your addendum indicates that we are re, um, proposing a reduction to 130300 If you could all please amend that figure to 126100. $126,100. Okay. And that would be the only change that I'm aware of to the packet that we sent you. Okay. All right. Duly noted. All right. For the 2020 assessment, the assessor considers sales that occurred between October 1 of 2018 through September 30th of 2019 were required by statute to maintain assessed values at 90 to 105% of sale price on an average. Um, we do that separately for each class of property, and we also look specifically at um, individual neighborhoods in the city as well. For our residential property study, there are 122 arm's length sales included in the study. Um, last year, we had 136 sales, so down slightly. The time adjusted median ratio was 87.7%. So that means on an average, we were about 12.3% less than sale price which falls below what is required by state statute. We increased neighborhoods whose sales demonstrated that we were most below market, and that happened to be the Old Town and Traverse de Sioux neighborhoods, the older sections of town. And while we're, we were at an average of 87.7 citywide, in those neighborhoods we were at about 84.7. The newer parts of town, except for Apple Tree townhomes, we were above 90. So we made sure that we target those increases where they're needed, which would have been the old section of town. After we made those adjustments, our median ratio came in at 91.8%, so we are above um, what is required by statute. Apartments, we refer to them as apartments, and they would be any property that has at least four living units. There was one apartment sale in St. Peter, and our ratio was 107.69, so we were overassessed on that. It was not the typical, um, what you would think of as an apartment building. It was an older single family home, turn of the century that had been converted to a fourplex. Um, there were some condition issues when the property was purchased and the new owner is um, working on taking care of those. We did not make any changes across the board to apartment values. Um, for commercial industrial properties, there were four sales included in our study and our median ratio was 79.87. Um, well below the 90% that's required. However, with only four sales, we also pull in some sales perhaps from last year um, to see where we're at using a larger sample of, of sales. Um, most of the structures in the downtown area were increased approximately 9%. The smallest properties, those properties that were say four to 600 square feet, very small, were increased more than the 9% as the market demonstrated a need to do that. The larger properties were reduced less than the 9%, again, because they would be um, too inflated if we applied that same increase to them. The strip mall structures increased 10%. All other commercial properties structures increased around 5%. So that would be shops, uh, mini storages, non-downtown offices, all were up about 5%. Um, mobile home parks. We had two of the mobile home parks in town sell this last year, Green Valley, we were at 91.57%, so fairly close to sale price. And Marway Park, we were at 40% of the sale price, very low. Um, those mobile home park sales aren't included in any state studies because they do have a tendency to be rather erratic and um, we do follow those, but um, we wouldn't receive any state increases based on those two sales. We did increase park improvement um, 10%. And that is all I have. Okay, and you want to give us just a little, what, what's, what is the Board of Appeal and Equalization, what are we supposed to do tonight? 
The Board of Appeal and Equalization is responsible for reviewing assessments to make sure everyone is assessed in a fair manner. Um, review classifications and values. Um, anyone that presents an appeal, if they present credible evidence that supports a change, then it is the Board's responsibility to make that change. Okay. All right. I see we have 6.05 p.m. Uh, if we have questions that come up, um, um, during the presentations, you know, that's fine. We will wait until we hear all of the appeals, uh, unless some of them aren't here, then maybe we can, you know, uh, go and do those then. But otherwise, we'll wait till we hear all of the appeals in order to try to stay on time with this. So the first one up um, is Jerry Chow. Chow, I'm sorry, Jerry, if I pronounced your name wrong. And do we know if Jerry is here to join us tonight? I'm online. Can you hear Jerry, me? yep, I I can. This is Mayor Zeman. We are uh, and the council is here. Jerry, if you want to tell us, uh, we have some information in front of us. But if you want to tell us why you think your property should be valued uh, lower than it is now, we would appreciate you telling us now. Okay, okay. You do you have access to the internet? Yes, we do. Okay, I uh, have a lease of a uh, property. I was comparing with this uh, this afternoon. And it doesn't really make any sense to me at all. So uh, I think I think all most of them is based on the uh, like the acreage, right? The size of the lot itself, and then the structure in terms of the uh, living square feet, correct? That's how you can access them to compare as a count, correct? Well, it's it's a well. I'll let the assessor answer, but it, I'll start out. It's a total. You know, we don't you don't break it down by. Uh, when they value it, it's broken down that way because you have to attribute some value to the land and to the structure. But uh, it's basically it's an overall total of what the property sells for. Okay, because I have uh, I can give you a list of the uh, comments looking at, and it doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, I just don't know how you guys run run your your business over there. Anyway, so these are the one I was comparing with. Actually, the particular one is like a, if you look at a six hundred. Uh, let's see here, what is 600, sorry, 600 Washington. That was oh. on sales on, uh, the one that one was sale on, uh, I think just not too long ago. Uh, let's see, 600 was on, on uh, August 8th, 2018. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I was looking at that, it, it, uh, I was looking at the, uh, what was the value uh, for this year to increase from 2020 to 21 is 11,200, which is 7.349%. And then I was comparing the one before that, the year before, from uh, 19, uh, 2018 to 2019, was increased by $11,800 also. And then I was compared it to mine, it's different. Percentage is different and then just like a playing in the ballpark, I can kind of compare on the acreage and the land size and then the square feet itself. And also the other one I, I want you to get to look at is uh, 518, I think it's West Walnut Street. And that was sold in uh, May 24th, I think, 2019. It's above the same property, it has the same size in terms of structure. And then the other one, the two more, uh, 210 West, Wabasha Street, and it was sold on May 3rd, 2019. Okay. And then the other one is 220 and 520 North 4th Street. It was sold in August 27, 19. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to ask the assessor, Lorna. Uh, were were those that uh, that Jerry has mentioned? Were those used in the sales study? If they were within the um within the study period of October 1 of 18 through September 30th of 19, they would have been. Um, and when we're when he's talking about um, the overall increase was different, all of these properties received the same increase to structures, which was 9.52%. Okay. But the, the land no, value- I totally disagree with that. I totally disagree with that. Okay, if you look at it, if you compare the one on, uh, Let's see here. I think this one, this one is really, really kind of curious to me. As I say, how you get come with the formula? Just like, 
out of my mind here. Okay, if you look at the one on 520 North 4th Street, the increase yeah. is only $800, 0.49%. Explain that, that to me out. then. Okay, 520 North 4th Street. Value now is 169 300 and last year was 161 100 I think. Yep. Correct. So it's only by $800. Yep. Correct. Uh, Jerry, let, uh, let, let Lorna, let the county assessor explain. Okay, go ahead. And then, unless I'm curious, yeah. I'm mystified by what's going on. So explain yep. to oh. me, please. Help me out here. You are correct. <laughs> Initially, it would have received the same 9.52% increase on the structure because it is in the St. Peter Old Town area, but there was a correction made on that. After the property sold, we reviewed the property record and we had been carrying that as a full two story and it is not a full two story, it's a story and a half. So when we find an error in the assessment record, when we review the parcel, we make that correction before we apply the neighborhood adjustment. And so for that property, there was a correction along with the increase. So there was a reduction and then the across the board increase. But for example, okay, so 600, we'll Washington, 600 Washington, would have received the same 9.52% increase on structures, but land values stayed flat for that property. So, okay, so that so what, Jerry, well, what happened to my property? Tell me then. Explain well, to me. That, then. Jerry, that, that explains your, the first question you had. Maybe I wasn't clear enough. They put an increase to the to the percentage increase on the structures, not on the land. Okay. So if you okay. had, okay, if you had just a second. If you okay, had no more problem, value in structures, then your per, your value would have gone up more. Okay, how, how do you define structure then? In terms of square feet, in terms of, I mean, I think square feet covers structure, even single story or double story, right? It basically yep. covers that, right? Okay, yep, so that's the, what I'm saying. Square, what? Okay, I, that's what I'm saying. The one I gave you, the lease I gave you, right? The other about the same is about the, you know, the, uh, yeah, but, 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 but that doesn't mean the value of the structure is going to be the same. Their structure may be older. It may be depreciated more. It doesn't strictly go apples to apples by the number of square feet because there's other factors. There's a condition of the house, of the property. There's, there's the age of the property. So that makes a difference in that regard. Okay. Do you have a formula to adjust to the age, the, uh, Condition of the house. Um, Is there I a, don't, the, a formula? The computer, formula the computer, the computer does it with the the county assessor has the uh, the the program that they use does it automatically. So what rate of depreciation and everything else that's involved, I'm not sure. So, so Jerry, okay, let me you, ask you. Let, let me ask you this. What, what do you what do you think your property is worth? No, because I say no. I'm I'm not I'm not used to uh, Minnesota's uh, regulation whatsoever. I have other property in Texas, in uh, Florida, and across the board itself. And and what we usually do, right? I mean, a lot of municipality uses whatever the the sales value, the time was purchased, and then stay on that all the way through until the next sales. Yeah. See, and that's that's illegal in Minnesota. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. That's why illegal. That, uh, okay, I don't know because why it's illegal, but but I say yeah, it is. A lot of the, the state the state statute says we we cannot do that. Um, that is called spearing, and we cannot do that. That is one of the people lose their jobs if they would do that that way. But all no, states no, no, are that's different. Fine. Okay, all that's fine. All, all states are okay. different. So, um, but I still need to ask you what what do you think your property is worth? What's my important here? Because I. I think it's less than what you guys adjusted to be. I think okay. right now you can estimate it to be 178, 300. I mean, this the property I'm, I'm addressing is the, the one 121, 123. Mm -hmm. It's a duplex. Okay, right. on Madison Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we've got a picture and everything of it. Yep. Okay, good. Perfect. Perfect. So, so uh, if you can, because I'm, I'm more in terms of the numbers itself, if you can tell me now how the number came about. You see, I'm okay. saying compared to just like the one I gave you, the, the one, two, three, four, five addresses I gave you, the way you can, you know, you applying your rules or regulation, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't seem to be fair. That's yeah. what I'm complaining about. Yeah, no, I understand that. Um, here's what we'll do, Jerry. Uh, we will, we are going to hear all of the appeals. There's a few okay. of them here tonight. We're going to hear all of the yeah. appeals. Then mm -hmm. we will discuss them, and then we yeah. will relay well, we our de decision to 
the county assessor, okay? Okay, okay. And when we relay, then you have, they have so many days, what is it, Lorna, 10 days? We'll, we'll send out letters likely by the end of the week with the decision. The decision. Okay, it's fine. Okay. It, okay, okay, Jerry, just, uh, but if you do not agree with what we come up with, okay. then, then you have a right, because you appeared tonight, then you have a okay. right to go to the County Board of Appeal. Okay. And, and Lorna, do you have those addresses so you can maybe give him a little more written detail when we send I out do. something? Okay. I, so I have, so let me make sure I have them all here. 600 Washington, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. 518. 518. Go, you go, go ahead. ahead. 518 Walnut. 518 Walnut. 520 yep. North Fourth. Yep. 210 uh, West Wabasha. All right. Okay, and then 706 North 8th Street. And All then right. actually have a few more because this one are the more recent. And then 600, okay, because 600, you got, uh, okay. How about 1319 7th Street, South 7th Street? All right. Uh, did I give you the one 706? Okay, 706, you got that one. And then Let's see here, 520, 512, and 210. You got 210, right? 210, 518, 520. Okay, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, about five or six of them. I've I mean, take them because I, I just go all the way back to 2018 itself. Because some right. of them okay. did not even increase. Only yep. something like the one I pointed out, like 520, is only 800 yep. this year. You know, yep. the previous year was 11, and then some of them, actually, one of them was actually really low. And then all of yep. a sudden, bump up to like $13,000. More. Well, Jerry, yeah. Jerry, like I say, Lorna, we will come up with a decision. Lorna will send okay. you those re what we come up with. Now, before yeah. you go, I'm going to ask okay. the rest of the council. I'm not going to go around, but does anybody on the council have a question for Jerry? I did not hear anything. Barb, did anybody signal? No, nope, everybody's microphones are off. Okay. All right. So, Jerry, we thank you for appealing, for doing this. Uh, it's part of your right. And like I say, when you when you get our decision, uh, Lorna will give you options that you have from that okay. point if you want to proceed. So, okay. Uh, Sounds good. I think, you, I think the one, I think the next meeting is the uh, the, the county level is on uh, June 15th. Is that correct? 6.30? I'm That's not even sure. The letter that we sent to you, the letter that we sent to you will indicate who to call and when to call to make that appointment. Okay, so it's different than the one that have been published before. Came with the first letter itself, today's meeting, I'll, and then next one is the uh, County Board of Appeal and Equalization is on Monday, June 15th at 6.30. No, this is incorrect? Correct. Wait, no, uh, that's correct. We'll just, we'll just double check um, that okay. you have all the information when we send you the letter. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. I appreciate your help. Uh, have a good evening. Thank you, Jerry. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye. Bye. All right, um, next we have a 6.15 appointment and we're uh, three minutes late for Scott and Sarah Moe. Are the Moes, either one of them, here tonight with us? I don't hear anything. There is, Lorna, one, other call, there is one other caller on the line, but it must not be them. Okay, if the Moes are not with us, Lorna, do we still hear the appeal? Are you gonna present for them? No. Um, if someone okay. either does not appear in person or submit a letter, um, then it is not an official appeal. Okay. I, I do have a little information I can share with you, though, just briefly. Mm -hmm. um, this, and I included it in the packet, but this is a short-term rental referred to as a BRBOs, Airbnbs. Um, we did receive a, a directive from the Department of Revenue to change these to commercial this year. And we have a handful in town that we've been in contact with over the last few years, sort of knowing this was coming. There is some legislation that's still pending if the tax bill passes um, that will change this classification with no other action by any other board. So there's still yet to come on this, but um, we'll, we'll keep the most posted on, on where they stand with that. Okay. Since we have a little time, uh, what are what's the legislation saying? What are they changing it to? A couple of different options. Um, I'm not sure what made it into the final bill, but one option was um, to have a moratorium on any changes. So it would go back to whatever it was last year 
which was a multifamily um, residential rental. Right. Other option would be to change to what's called, I think it's a 4B1 class, and it would be the same rate as a non-homestead duplex. Okay. Um, I would not be too optimistic with the legislature getting anything done this year on <laughs> some of this stuff, but maybe they will. Um, my question, I did have, a, just for my own use right now, since we have a couple yeah. minutes here, um, do... Um, did you just strictly go by square footage uh, when when this determination was made? As far as the percentage breakdown? Yeah. No. Oh, because okay. part of because part of what's used um, for the the short term rental, the main floor of the house and the the upper floors of the house are used for short term rental, and those would have more value than say the old unfinished basement or okay. the garage. Right. So what we okay. did was pull those different value pieces out and look at the house as if it didn't have those features. And gotcha. then we were able to determine what percentage it added. Okay. All right. Sounds like a fair way of doing it. I was just kind of curious how you guys came up with that. So, and if the mows are not there, um, we have just a couple of minutes. Uh, maybe we can go back. I said, we were going to wait till the end, but we have about four minutes before our next appointment. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, let's go back to Jerry and I don't want to, Murder his name here. So Jerry C H U A Chua. Um, does anybody have any questions or, or from Lorna now or whatever on this on this matter? I didn't hear anything, Lorna. I do have a question. Um, yeah. When he purchased this thing, you know, he's talking now about just the increase compared to everybody else. But when he purchased this thing back in 2005, it was at the height of the market, 2004 to 2005 was pretty much at the height. Has his value ever gone down from then? Do you know? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, oh. it went down. I'm just going to give you a history here. Sure. So I have back to 2007, 2008, 2009. It stayed flat at 159.9. Then for 2010, it went down to 153.6. 2011, it dropped to 151.1. 2012, it dropped to 145.1. Stayed flat for 13 at 145.1. 2014, it went up to 151. 2015, it dropped to 143.9. 2016, it increased to 149.5. 2017, it increased to 151.2. 2018, it increased to 164.2. 2019, it increased to 165.6, just a slight increase, and then this year up to the 178.3. Um, now, one of the reasons that there was a value change, let me check what year it was. Um, Jerry called us. In 2018, because we had the property age listed, I believe, at one time at 1960, it was moved on to this site in 2001. So at that time, the best estimate from, um, from the information we had was that it was approximately 1960. But in 18, Jerry called and insisted that it was a 1978 house, that it was not a 1960 home. So we did change that in 2018, and that's why it went up slightly otherwise it would have stayed flat well i don't know about uh you know if he realized what the repercussions of that maybe he just wanted to find that it was uh um you know that it was have it listed as newer but i remember being in this property when it was moved on and i checked the uh, circuit breaker box the old one and it had 1960 on it so anyway we, we told him well we encouraged him you know, to make sure that that was truly accurate before we would change an assessment record. And he absolutely insisted that he was positive. Okay. And so we changed it. Okay. All right. We now have, um, I guess we've got about a minute left. Does anybody have any other questions on this property? Mr. Mayor, I don't have a question on this property. This is Carrie Johnson, but yes. could, could, 
Lorna, could you re reiterate for just for a, from a process perspective? So when we get to the end and we're um, talking about this as a board, we are not considering or discussing the Moe's appeal because they were not Correct. present? Correct. Okay, thank you. I just needed to hear that one more time, I think. <laughs> thank okay. you. Yeah. All right. Anybody else, we will come back to uh, to the other property, and if the Moe's happen to show up in the meantime, we will uh, take their appeal also. Um, but anyway, um, the um, we will come back to this because we need to make a decision uh, on all of those that have appeared here tonight. So, so um, but at least we got some of that discussion taken care of. It is now 625, and our next appeal, if I remember right, is... Jim and Karen Wendroth for their property, uh, li a vacant lot on North 3rd Street. Are either one of the Wendroths here tonight? Yes, I'm on the line. Is that Jim? That's right. Hey, Jim. This is Mayor Zeman. On this end, we have the City Council and we have the Nicollet County Assessor. If you, I know you've been through this before, but if you just want to tell us why you think the value of your property is too high, we will be more than willing to listen to you. Okay. Well, <clears throat> to start out with, we're at 22000 They want to raise it 1500 <clears throat> I got no water, no sewer, no curb or gutter, no improved street, no storm sewer. And if I was to put these in, the cost of that would be 27000 you put all these figures in there, and now that property is worth 50500 And there isn't anything in St. Peter that sells for that price on a bare lot. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, there are some, Jim, but there, there aren't a whole lot of lots for sale <laughs> anymore That's in St. Peter, as you know. Uh, but there, I think we had one this last year, but... Uh, but it uh, it sold, or a couple of them that sold for higher than that. But but you're basically right. You know the ones that the city is doing out in uh, Traverse Green, they're all in the thirty thousand dollar range. And other than that, it's tough to find a lot to build on in St. Peter. Um, yeah. Yeah. I I don't I know the 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 discussion on all of those improvements have come up. Um, are, are, I guess I'm a little off track here, but would you be in favor of making those improvements or, I mean, it's just not going to be you. It'd be the whole thing. Do you think, do you think it's worth doing that to develop that end of the, your uh, circle there? No, I don't think it is because, okay. because 1420, when I owned that, I put the sewer into it and then my daughter bought it from me mm -hmm. and the city had her put the water in at a high cost. And now if they run the main pass there, there's going to be fees there again, tapping fees and hookup fees and all this stuff. Right. But I don't know how the city can charge her for any of this stuff, being it's not an improvement because she's already got sewer and water. Well, And yeah. out on the end where I'm at, I've got, I've got no interest in building a house out there or anything like that. If right. anything goes up, it would probably be a pole shed for storage or something. Yeah. Um, have, have you, uh, how long have you owned this, Jim? Oh, 1977. 1977. Okay. Have you ever, have you ever tried to, or has anybody ever expressed an interest in buying it from you during that, since that time? Or have you don't, didn't you care? No. Well, I, I had 3.2 acres at that time. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Well, Jim, we will we will uh, uh, take all of this under consideration. Um, I'm going to ask the council. I'm just gonna, not going to ask everyone. I'm just going to ask in general uh, if anybody on the council has any questions for Mr. Wendroth. I didn't hear anybody, Jim. So here's what's going to happen, Jim. We will review this later mm -hmm. tonight, and uh, I think you know the system. We will we will discuss it. We will go over it. And then Lorna uh, from the assessor's office, Lorna uh, Sandvik, the county assessor, will send you a letter saying uh, what we have determined here tonight. And if you don't agree with that, then you can appeal to the to the county board as the next level. So, but that's the process. 
Uh, like I say, I know you've been through it before on multiple multiple properties. I know that building downtown yeah. you have. So, yeah, so do you have any more questions? Too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah have have a lot down there. Yeah. Do you have any more questions or points you'd like to raise, Jim? Other than you know, we have this. What you told us, we have this in a letter form here too. Uh, yeah, that, and they, and that that's basically what I'm what I'm saying. It's just going to put the price of that thing way out of line, and all it's going to do is raise the taxes. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have we have to look at values. You know, taxes relate to it, but we really don't have, we can't look at taxes when it comes to something like that. We just look at the value and and uh, whether it's it's equally valued. You know, you have a unique property, and we just have to check and see if it's equally valued, fairly valued to other like properties. And like I say, it's tough to do because there isn't a lot of properties like that in the city anymore. So that's right. And uh, the neighbors on some of it probably have a little to do with it too. <laughs> so, so, all right. Uh, once again, I'll ask the council. Uh, Lorna, did you have anything for uh, for Mr. Wendroth while he was on? I do not. Okay. Council, again, any questions? All right. Thank you, Jim. We will you be uh, we will be getting in touch with you probably by the end of the week. Good enough. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. Next. All right. So we are, I think, have one more scheduled appointment at 635, when we are four minutes away from that. Um, is there any discussion while we during that four minutes on the property we just heard about from Mr. Uh, Mr. Wendroth? Chuck, this is Steve Grams. Uh, Lauren, yes, did you? Um, did, I was looking through your letter. I didn't see anything unless I missed it relative to vacant property. Was there anything? And I and and like you know, like the mayor said, there are very few lots available other than a, a Western town. So I, there was, was there, a whole there was a list of vacant lot sales at the bottom of that page. Right. Seven, seven uh, lots. I'm just wondering if those have curb and gutter uh, or they, any of the infrastructure. They do. Yeah. Okay. They do. All right. Yeah, Steve, I think this area where he's at here on North Third, that's the one we've talked about here for a few years. Uh, that is, uh, that's about the only area in town that doesn't have them. So. Yep. You know, it's it's been that way for okay. forever. So, all right. yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Anything to uh, ask Lorna or myself or, or comments on this one before we move on to our 6:35 here in a couple of minutes? Yes, Mr. Mayor. This is Emily. Um, yeah. When I was reading this one, I was just not quite clear. Have any of those improvements been done? Like the road improvements completed or? Um, are we still waiting on the water sewer and the curb and gutter for this property? Yeah, none of, none of that has been done. This is a discussion I thought we had not too long ago. Uh, we've been talking about this for a few years, uh, uh, but we had this discussion not too long ago. To get, you know, we really have to get consent from everyone uh, and and buy into this um, because it's kind of a tricky situation. There, there's, a, I think it's statute 1297, I believe it is, that says. If you make these improvements and assess people for them, you have to prove that your property is has improved that much or is worth that much more because of that. So you try to get people to buy into it, just you know, to to, to hopefully get get some results in that regard. And yeah, none of this has been done. This is all uh, Bolton and Mank and and uh, the public works have gone through and and come up with some numbers, but. Uh, that's where we get the breakdown of uh, on the uh, on the sheet here of what all these costs are, and it's pretty expensive if you don't have a lot that you think is worth that to begin with. So, thank you. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. I do have a little. I do have a little information to share on this too about some neighboring lots, but we can do that when you're when we're all finished with the appeals, if you'd like. Yeah. Why don't we do that then? Because we just have a. Um, a minute or so here so i don't want to keep people waiting on the other end um of this so so um next up we have um uh, get to the right page here if i remember right it's mr byers yes and it is 6 34 is mr byers with us tonight i am yes sir hi how you doing matt i'm well how are you good this is mayor zeman and we also have the council here and we have Barb from the city uh, 
city administrator's office, and we have Lorna, who is the um, county, what are you, Lorna? County assessor, I think. So, so anyway, Matt, we did get a copy with some background information on your property, but if you want to tell us, and we do have a copy of your letter that is dated May 13th, but if you want to just uh, give us some highlights and uh, concerns, and we will go from there. Sure. Thank you for your time, uh, Mr. Mayor and, and uh, Board of Appeal. I appreciate your time. And uh, it comes down to just understanding, or, or I should say con contesting perhaps uh, the total market value. I know that you have to, um, you know, your hands are tied uh, based on the uh, the estimated market value, but the, or the, I should say the taxable market value, your hands are tied on the estimated market value. But the taxable market value is what ultimately you're going to be determining other way around, excuse me. <laughs> um, but uh, over the last you know, five years, I think the letter states that uh, since 2017, I would say, the taxable market value has increased in our home 22%, um, which doesn't seem like a lot, um, but, it, but it really does um, affect our, uh, our taxes in the long haul. And we have a, when we bought the property in 2015, we knew that we were getting into a situation where we likely wouldn't make any money on the house when we sold it. You know, um, it's a hundred and 130 some odd year old home, needs a lot of tender loving care. The previous owner did a wonderful job at restoring it, but it's now in need of, a desperate need of a roof and, and uh, a paint job. Um, we tried to do the roof last year and we tried to get, uh, try to get funding through a home equity line of credit uh, based upon the, our hopes that it had indeed appraised or would appraise for an appreciated value based upon the fact that I've been seeing our taxes on it go up every year. Um, and it did not. And I asked them, I asked the appraiser why it didn't. In fact, I think it went up one, $1,000. Um, and uh, in, in, in four years of owning it in a, in a really great market. Um, and, uh, and they said, well, for your type of home, the market's quite different, and and I agree. I think while um, we love our home and it's a phenomenal home rooted in a lot of history in the city, it does not have a garage. It does not have a finished basement. Um, people think thought we were nuts when we purchased it, but I'm an architect. I'm smitten with the home. We love it. We want to take care of it for the next round of owners in the next whenever that is, 30 years from now. Um, but we, it's just not sustainable to continue to have that, uh, the taxes go up as, as they have on the home when I think that we're in a different market. We, it's not, I would agree that the market in St. Peter has certainly gone up for new builds and for homes that do not require costly annual maintenance, um, such as ours. I mean, the, the roof alone is going to be a $50,000 uh, bill, um, even though we had it uh, bid out to a, a number of different companies. Um, in which case I'm now doing it myself, which everybody in my family is uh, scared to death about, but we just don't have a choice. We can't afford 50,000 for that. Likewise for painting, but we believe it's the right thing to do. It's And, it, and we can't just have it, um, you know, any shingles that go on. And I said this in the letter, I'm not gonna repeat myself out of respect of your time, but we have to do it architecturally correct. And so um, it's just, I, I would argue that our market for our home does not appreciate the same rate as the rest of St. Peter. Um, when we purchased it, it had already sat on the market for five years on and off, and we expect to have the same kind of a long selling process when we sell it, finally, when we retire in 20 to 30 years or 20 years from now. So, um, in fact, when the appraiser did it, uh, initially appraised our home or tried to for the sale, it was very difficult to find comparables. They had to go to Mankato to find comparables for the home. They couldn't get a good market value on it. Um, and likewise, for the latest appraisal that just occurred uh, last March, in, uh, March of 2019, they also had a difficult time finding comparables. They had to go to Mankato for some. So my argument is simply that it is a, a different market, and I would uh, respectfully request a reconsideration of the, uh, of the market value of the home for tax purposes. So thank you for your time, and I'm happy okay. to answer the questions you may have. Okay. Um, instead of me starting this time, uh, is anybody, I'm not going to go around, but is anybody on the council or on the, on the, I should say, Board of Appeal, which happens to be the council in this case, does anybody have any questions for, uh, for Mr. Byers? I didn't hear any. Um, Matt, I'm going to ask you a couple. Um, uh, and one of them you did already answer, uh, the arbitrary statement that uh, um, that is conveyed by your appraiser about um, uh, 
let's see here. Our home is not appraising in the value and uh, the way other markets in the city or the mm-hmm. state. I, I, I don't quite get that. I mean, I, I he evidently found comps uh, somewhere, mm-hmm. um, but I, I just don't quite get that statement. Um, you know, the, that uh, he could arbitrarily just say that um, uh, if there aren't any any for sale, I, I guess uh, you just to pick out one. My my other question for you is. What what do you think what do you think your house is worth? You know, you talk, excuse me. I'll back that up a little bit. You talked about taxes. We can't do anything about the taxes. I realize that they go up you know, based on value, if uh, if market if uh, most other things being unchanged. But what do you think your house is worth as it sits there today? <laughs> uh, well, I thought we overpaid for it when we bought it. Quite honestly, um, I would I would put it probably at three hundred. Um, and at, at three, you know, we paid 340 for it back in 2015. The seller had previously asked 400 for it. And we, uh, based on the advice of our realtor, we offered 300 and we met somewhere in the middle. Um, okay. I, so, and I, and I understand that the, you know, the, the market value is, um, you know, some, it's subjective, quite honestly. But I, I would, I, let's say I wish it would be 300, but it's, it's probably not, quite honestly. If it was in Minneapolis, it'd be worth, a heck of a lot more, but it's not. And we made that decision when we moved down to St. Peter. Right. So. right. Um, yeah. When you did buy it, uh, the 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 market value, uh, estimated market value at that time was two hundred sixty four thousand nine hundred dollars, which is seventy seven, almost seventy eight percent of what the 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 county needs to be at nine ninety to one hundred and five percent. So here's the reverse of this: <laughs> you got a deal on your taxes for the first like four or five years, four years, because it was undervalued uh, when it came to that. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not worth, or that doesn't mean that it's not worth $300,000 now. It doesn't mean it's worth $340,000 now. Mm-hmm. But like I say, the, the the market and the changes in value that were given initially when that happened, because you were only at 78% of, of, uh, of the estimated market value, you mm-hmm. helped create the value, the market, the increase because of that. So, you know, it's a, the, the county only has, they do mass appraisal. They only have so many tools they can use. And it's all, it's all really because they use statistics. Uh, it's an objective point of view, you know, uh, subjectivity probably initially when the condition of the house and the quality of the house was done is maybe a little subjective, but, but after that, it all comes down to, to, uh, objectivity and reading the statistics right or wrong. Um, so from that regard, um, so you feel it's worth around 300,000, uh, 50,000 for the roof. You said <laughs> 50,000 for the roof and they wanted another 70 for painting. And I said, take a hike. Yeah. <laughs> that was my next question was, was what, uh, is there any other deferred, deferred maintenance situations that, that the house needs? Uh, Tuck pointing in the. Uh, I gotta. I gotta rebuild the chimney this summer. Uh, the the top part of the chimney and tuck pointing. But again, that's. I'm planning on taking a couple of weeks off from work and renting a aerial lift and doing all the work myself because uh, yeah. we just can't afford a hundred thousand dollars of maintenance this this year. So. Right. Yeah, I know when uh, this house had a lot. Of, a lot of these renovations were done in 19, uh, 1998 after the tornado. Yeah. Um, I remember seeing the current owners, and I think you bought it maybe from from Judy Allstrom. Um, yep. that, yeah, and, and her husband—I can't think of his first name. Barb Mark. might know, but yep. yeah, Mark Allstrom. I, I remember seeing him and his crew, and you know, meticulously putting one shingle on at a, at a time and taking a look at it and making sure it all—you know—it was kind of kind of humorous to watch them, to be honest with you. Um, well, I wish they hadn't used the certainty roofing because that's. Uh, if, if you've driven by our house lately, it's it's uh, it's I think it's atrocious. My wife says it doesn't look as bad as you think, but again, I'm an architect, so it's the, uh, it's the whole certainty uh, warranty issue where the shingles are cupping and there's nothing that can be done for it. We're outside of the statute limitations, but unfortunately, all the roofs that were put on in that time are failing at about the same time and pretty quickly. When we bought it, we had no visible damage on the roof, and within one year of buying it, it just went to hell. So. Yeah, no, I, I understand. Uh, I had one. I, re- I replaced a roof on a on a, a, a duplex 
that had certain teed shingles put on after the tornado and I replaced that two years ago and it was absolutely terrible. And yeah, yeah you can you can get on some class action suit maybe left hanging on. They said you might get a hundred bucks. So, so with uh, I'm not yeah. gonna do it. Yeah. Yeah. So um okay, we will what we'll do and, and uh is we have all of these to review, uh plus a few other letters and stuff that have come in. Um we will do that yet tonight and then by the end of the week um, Lorna, the county assessor, and her office will send you a letter as to our decision. And that letter will also state that if you do not agree, you can move to the county board of appeal, which that will be the dates and everything else will be in there at that time too. Okay. Um, so, but before you leave, um, does anybody on the board uh, have any questions for, for Mr. Byers? This is Carrie Johnson. Um, it's, hi there. Okay. Is your home on any sort of National Register of Historic Places or in Minnesota? It is. It's on the National Register of Historic Places um, for a, uh, and this is part of the reason why we have to do these costly updates and use the right shingles, the more expensive shingles and so forth, because we it, we need to do it correctly in order to maintain our status on the, the National Historic Register. Um, so yes, it is. Are there any tax credits that um, historic homes that you know of are, are eligible? Is your home eligible for any type of tax credit for, through the state? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. I have looked into it in the past, um, but since we are not a, um, it, you would be able to if you ran a business, if you had a business operating out of it and it was an income producing property, um, but we, it, it's not an income producing property, it's just our home. So. Uh, it's a great question, but as far as I know, no. If if they had them, I I would have done it because uh, it would have certainly helped with the roof. Now I know that the previous owner did get some state grants for the replacement of a turret, um, but that was a one-time deal back in 1998, I believe. Um, but no, thank you for the question. Thank you. You bet. Anybody else have any other questions before we let uh, Matt go? Mr. Mayor, this is Steve Grams. I just have a couple, just a question, Matt. You know, sure. I looked at this, I'm in a wheelchair, I looked at this house and I looked at building a ramp under the door and some additions and an attached garage. Um, and I looked at the price that they were asking for and I thought it was way overvalued what they were asking for relative to the assessed value by the county. Uh, so I said, no, it's not worth that. I'm not gonna pay that extra inflated price. Mm -hmm. Why did you then, you must must have thought it's worth uh, 340,000 that you paid for that. So, uh, why did you, why would you be willing to spend, uh, that kind of money uh, over knowing what the assessed value is for the county? Cause I'm a sucker. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry to be blunt, but again, I'm an architect and although I, our practice is we mainly do more modern homes. Um, I have a soft spot for traditional homes. And when we worked with our realtor, Judy Conroy, and we were moving from Southwest Minneapolis, um, which was also a fixer upper. And I said, listen, I, I'm an architect. I either want to build my house um, and I'm going to find land to do that. Or we want a very well cared for historic home, older home, because we just love the charm. And she said, well, and, and I tried, we found some property, but I had it priced out with the design. and It was not even possible. And so she said, well, I've got just the home for you. So we looked at this home. We looked at um, the one down the street, the governor such and such home, forget the name of it exactly, the older historic home down the street, um, and another one across town. All three were historic homes, um, or I should say older homes. Um, we loved the charm of it, and, I, and we really wanted to preserve it, quite honestly, because who knows what would happen if it didn't get preserved. It could have been torn down. It could have been Put into rentals so that's why we did it just because as i'm a sucker and i'm in the wrong profession <laughs> okay that's, that's a good answer i guess i yeah uh, okay all right well thank you very much for right. mr honest that way i appreciate that <laughs> it was Any, not the smartest investment move i'll tell you that <laughs> anyone else matt correct me if i'm wrong but weren't where has it been since you've owned it or was when the allstrom's owned it i think it's been since you weren't you on hg hg tv my wife asked that i i don't think so i think it was when it was redone i think it was back in 2012 or 13 and and ms allstrom was being interviewed i think by the mankato free press okay. 
Okay. I thought I thought I heard heard it on HDTV. But anyway, that's yeah. neither here nor there. So we uh, had a lot of um, I'd call them uh, people that had a really good time in the seventies. Uh, stopped by the house um, unannounced <laughs> one day when we still owned it, or we just owned it and just walked in and helped himself. I said, "Who the hell are you?" And he's like, "Who the hell are you?" <laughs> <laughs> um, they gave us the history of the house that you know John Denver was here, Peter Paul and Mary, um, yeah. Bob Dylan. So it, it's kind of a special place. Yeah. So okay. Well, Mayor, thank you, and Council members, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I didn't mean to interrupt, Mr. Mayor. Sorry. Oh no, you're you're fine. And like I say, we'll we'll have a letter to you uh, as to our, mm -hmm. our decision, and everything will be laid out as to your options at that point. So. Very good. Thank no you. No one so else much. has any, anybody else have any other questions? I'll ask again. All right. Thank you, Matt. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right. So that, I think, is our end of our schedule appeals. Um, since we have have this one fresh on our mind, we can go back through all of them. But let's uh, let's start with this one, and then we'll go back to the other ones that have appeared, and then we'll go to the letters. So let's start with, uh, with Mr. Byers. Thoughts? Anyone, once again, just throw out anything you want to discuss or talk about uh chuck this is brad mm -hmm. um my thoughts on this one um honestly i well while I, while i have a lot of uh sympathy uh for us this is the one case that actually i have probably more sympathy for as far as his plight um i just have to say i mean if we're looking at market value he did just have an appraisal that came in at 304 well, i think if he said it was 1000 over so it came in at 341 um, like I said, I I would say at this point I would say it's an it, it's his proposed his proposal for 2021 would be an accurate reflection of of what he should be paying. Um, right. But that's like I said uh, that, that that's just my that's just my thought on it is he's actually got an appraisal on the value at this point. So. Right. Um, I, I asked I asked um, you know well he said the fifty thousand but I want to know about more on deferred maintenance. If somebody's doing an appraisal on this, and if they also see that it needs this kinds of things, the appraiser would adjust yep. for deferred maintenance uh, on any of these types of things to get to that three hundred forty-one thousand. So uh, I'm in agreement with you, with you there, Brad. As far as um, yeah, and, and I tried to point out, hopefully not too, but he he did get a deal on uh, yep. on value. Not necessarily on on uh, anything else, but on his purchase. But he did get a v deal on his value relative to his purchase price through those years. Any other comments? Uh, Chuck or uh, Mr. Mayor, this is Steve. I just feel it's valued correctly as far as the county is concerned. Um, you know, I was a reason I looked at. I, the reason I didn't want to buy it. I uh, was going to have my daughter live upstairs, and I was going to have a ramp built on or an elevator in addition. I thought this is crazy. That kind of difference in price, so I just couldn't do it. Yeah. So, um, I think it's, you know, you're correct. He's gotten a deal over the last year. So. Yeah. But we need to look at value at this point in time, and I think Brad pointed that out. You know, I mean, he he's at three twenty eight, and he just had yep. an appraisal for three forty one, three forty or three forty one. You know, that's that's pretty strong strong language. And like I said, I'd feel differently if if um, if it would be that an appraiser would not take, like I say, into account the uh, deferred maintenance or any other kind of repairs that needed to be done, which they should be doing. Lorna, did you see the appraisal at all? I did not. Okay, all right. Anybody else, any any other questions or comments or anything to do with this one? And then what we're going to do is uh, deal with these one at a time. So, uh, at and then we'll take uh, on that point we'll take a roll count but uh, a roll call but we need to have if nobody has any other questions then we need to make a motion to do one of three things we need to have a motion to reduce the value to a certain level we need to make make him or to make a motion to leave the value the same the 328.8 or one other option we do have i can't see us doing it in this case we can also raise values um I know we've had them. I, I was talking to Carrie the other day. We had one, I think, Lorna, before you came back, that they wanted to sell their house, and it was, it was, they felt it was too low because people were checking the county market value, and they thought, you know, raise our value so it matches up. So it does happen. So we didn't raise it, but but we had no justification for doing it. But people do ask that we have that request. So 
with that being said, uh, if we can close this one up, is there anyone that would like to make a motion regarding any of those three conditions? Mr. Mayor, this is Ed. I'll make a motion to leave it the same. All right, is there a second? Mr. Mayor, this is Steve Grams. Um, I'll second uh, Mr. Johnson's uh, okay. proposal. Okay. Any other questions or comments before I ask Barb to take the roll call? This is Emily. I do have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, I am just doing some quick math. Um, the value. So what he he purchased the home for three hundred forty thousand, and should the tax the the value be at ninety percent, and wouldn't that be more like three hundred seven thousand? Well. Or am I the math wrong. We, we're striving to be at a at a hundred percent of market value. Uh, Minnesota is a hundred percent market value state, but of course that is that's really um, real estate's an imperfect market, and assessing isn't perfect either. So we are required to maintain our average between ninety and one hundred and five. We're going to have um, values and sales every year that fall below the ninety and above the hundred and five. They just look at our average when they talk about the 90 to 105. So even if something was at 104% of sale price, that would still be within the allowable range. Thank you for the explanation. Appreciate it. Yeah, as I said in the uh, in the other uh, scenario, uh, um, our first appellant, uh, Mr. Chua, if where did he say he lived? Texas, I believe it was, and they raised it to the purchase price. Well, if we would do that in Minnesota in 2015, payable taxes in 2016 on this property, he'd have been paying on 340,000 for the last one, two, three, four, five, six years, five years, I guess, six coming up. So any other uh, comments, questions? Call the roll, please, Barb. This one is a simple motion because there's no resolution. So just eyes and nays. I got you. All right. All in favor of leaving the value of this property uh, at the assessed value of $328,800, please signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose? The value is remains the same, and Lorna will do all of her other jobs. Um, next up, let's go back to uh, Mr. Chua on uh, the first one, the 605 appeal. Uh, I asked a couple of questions, and Lorna was 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 uh, very kind to go through some of these uh, past valuations. Does anybody else have any questions on this one? It was uh, the current value, I believe, is 178.3. Mr. Mayor, this is Brad again. Uh, mm -hmm. my, my thought on this one is, um, well, I'd, if I were him, I'd stop arguing about the price because I actually think it's probably worth more if you paid 179 and 05. I know my rentals from back then dipped in value, but they're over what I purchased for them now. So I would say at this point, there's no reason to drop. It seems more he's just upset that his he's going up a percentage more than anyone else. Yeah, I think I think you're accurate there, Brad. I, th I thought, you know, if his value had not dropped and, and shown the market decreases, then I could have seen where maybe we could do something or would do something. But since it did drop down and it's followed the market, just like the assessor is supposed to do, follow what the market is doing. And I think they've done that. And then the one major increase, except for this last year, had to do with the age of the structure, um, which, you know, for better or worse, I don't think he quite understands the, the depreciation and age and, and all of that kind of stuff, which is fine. A lot of people don't. I don't even understand it most of the time. So, um, anybody else? Any comments? Uh, yes, this is Emily. Um, basically, my sense on this one was I was kind of waiting for an explanation, like if he could demonstrate that it had decreased in value in some way. It doesn't sound like it has, and that was that was the thing that stood out to me. Yeah. Good point. I think that's a very good point, um, and that's what they need to demonstrate. And um, you know, if he had a if he had a current appraisal, um, but he has it, he's just going on. For me, from my from my take on this, was he's going going off of what he checked with other properties that he's trying to compare apples to apples, and you can't exactly do that. So, 
So I would agree with that. Um, anyone else? Uh, this is uh, Mr. Mayor, this is Steve Graham. You know, relative to when the house was built, uh, would the city or the county still have um, permit records when it was built? Or is that basically um, of old news and they just get rid of it? I'm just curious. Um, this this came this came from a different county. Okay. It didn't come from from Nicollet County, so they would not have. <clears throat> like oh. I say, when this got moved in, I I was working for the assessor's office at that time, and I there's just a crawl space underneath both of these sides. But I crawled underneath there and I found a, a panel and it had 1960 on it. And I asked the owner, I said, "Is that accurate at that time?" And he goes, "Yes, that is accurate." So, you know, from that regard, you know. Maybe if Jerry wants to double check on the age of his property, he might think a little bit differently and as far as his value, you know, because it's going to reflect not a big change, but it would reflect some change. And we did try to we did try to convince him that, you know, we we came up with that information from somewhere. I mean, we didn't just just guess, but he <laughs> insisted that he had hard evidence to the contrary. So we, you know, we didn't argue with him too much. It did make. It didn't make a lot of difference in its value, maybe a little over a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, and, and so. yeah. What happens with with the depreciation schedule is it's, it's not just every year gets changed a little bit. It's, it's more like a group of years. You know, I mean, it's Correct. it's a span type of thing, um, if I remember right. <clears throat> any um, any other comments, Mr. Oh. Mayor? This is Shannon. Yes. Um, is it would it be in order for me to ask a question of um, Miss Sandvik? Yes, sure. I'm just wondering because the conversation kind of went back and forth a little bit. If you mm -hmm. had any additional information that you wanted to clarify, or if there was anything that you weren't able to get to, or any questions you weren't able to ask. You know, we we did include, um, in fact, three of the of the duplexes that um, Jerry mentioned are on your memo that we sent out. Um, they were three sales used in our study. They did all receive the same across the board increase, except for the one that we had to make a, um, an error correction on, which, you know, we're never happy when that happens. But as soon as it comes to our attention, we certainly make that correction. But for other people, too, it's hard sometimes because they think the total value should all go up the same. When we just increase structures, um, that doesn't happen. Everyone will change slightly overall. Um, but when I send him his letter, I, I will clarify, I'll pull up each of those parcels that he mentioned, and I'll tell him what the last year's value was, what this year's value is, any sale information we have, so that he can see where um, their values increased like his did. Thank you very much for clarifying. I have no further questions. All right. Anyone else with a question? Um, Mr. Mayor, this is Steve Grams again. I just have one other question. Laura, when you uh, increase uh, the estimated market value, do you uh, just look at the uh, at the structure or do you include structure and land both? We can do both or either. Um, what we do when we look at um, our ratio study is, you know, we'll look at a total of 87% is our ratio. So we're going to need to make some changes to increase that over 90. We can increase both um, or one or the other. Um, a land increase, we will typically tie to um, vacant land sales. And if we have enough vacant land sales to support an increase in those land values, we may increase that as well as the structures. But if we feel those land values are um, in the ballpark, we'll limit our increase to the structures. Okay, thank you, Lorda. Anyone else? Good questions, everyone. Um, once again, I am looking for a motion for one of three options. Lower the value from the 178.3, leave the value the same at the 178.3, or raise the value for one, from 178.3. Does anyone desire to make a motion? Emily will move to... Um leave the value the same. Okay, is there a second? Noel will second. Okay, Emily one, Shannon two. All in favor of the motion to leave the value of Jerry Chu's property at 121 Madison Street 
at the 1783. Please signify it by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That value for that property will remain at 178.3. Uh, the Moes never did. We never did hear from Scott and Sarah, so we will move on to Mr. Wendroth. Questions? Discussion? Anybody have any concerns? The only statement I have, Chuck, this is Ed. The only yep. statement I have, it's it's more of a concern it's like you know these if they do the road improvements and stuff these lots are going to be expensive yeah i don't know what yeah. to do about it right yeah and that's like i say we get into that situation of uh <clears throat> of being able to prove they're worth it um you know and maybe with maybe i might be wrong with curb and gutter and streets and water and sewer and everything out there, you know, maybe, uh, maybe there are some desirable properties more desirable than they are now. So. Um, the one comment I would make on these is they're really large. You yeah. know, you can't, you can't get another lot in St. Peter to build a home on that's even close to this size. Um, right. You know, we had one on Rock Bend Parkway um, that was 25,000 square feet that sold for 75,000, completely different, um, you know, area of town. But that would be the closest in size. Um, right. And I did want to share too. Um, this property kind of has a history. It's it's sort of laid dormant in the assessor's office for years. It was flat valued some time ago based on Mr. Wendroth's appeal, and it it probably has needed some attention before now. Um, but just to share, next door to the Wendroth property is where his daughter lives, and that's an improved lot with a house on it. Um, but that parcel for land area is 33,975 square feet. So just very large, but just a, a touch smaller than Jim's lot. We have that land valued at $65,900. Um, just to the east of Jim Wendroth's property, there's a vacant lot that I believe Ron Johnson owns. And he bought that from a relative some time ago, but the one lot is 11,520 square feet, so a, less than a third this size. We have that valued at $20,800. Um, Ron also owns a parcel next to that, a little larger than the first piece, but it's 28,116 square feet. And that has an old shed on it. We have a few hundred bucks on that. We have that lot valued at $50,300. Okay. If, if this Look. lot value of 23.5 had come to our attention prior to the assessment year, it, it likely would have been increased to line up with the neighbors. All right. Um, my question is, did, did those other properties that you just mentioned, uh, Ron, the vacant ones, Ron Johnson's, did those get an increase? Mm -hmm. They would have, um, let me look for sure. All right, the, the parcel next door with the house on it, that land increased from 61.8 to 65.9. Um, Ron Johnson's parcels, Went one of them went from 19.5 to 20,800, and the other one went from 47.2 to 50,300. Okay, all that right. Little, that right. little neighborhood was all increased approximately the same percent across the board. Right. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, good uh, points to bring up. I was not aware that uh, that that was the case on this. Anyone else uh, questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Steve Grams, I just got a question. Um, if you were to speculate uh, what this property could potentially sell for if it went to full curb and gutter uh, with water and sewer, what do you think it would be worth? Well, well I think she has that in, our, in the memo here. Do, do you not, Lorna? Yeah. I'm looking yeah, at it. If we had water sewer let's see 
be typically valued at 57.9. And that's if it was gravel. So if you had water, sewer, and street in there, we would have a vacant value of 64.3 because it's so okay. large. All right. Okay. Yep. Well, then All the amenities question. are vacant. Um, go, go ahead, Steve. Would, um, it seems like you know this individual, Chuck. Would he sell this property for twenty? Uh, would he sell it for twenty three five or twenty four? I, I, I at this point in time, I don't think he would. Uh, I might be wrong. <clears throat> I don't. I know who he is. I mean, I. I uh, but as far as you know, I've, that's why I asked him. Uh, uh, has he ever had it for sale since nineteen seventy seven? And I think he indicated no that he hasn't. And you know, they used to live in that house where his daughter and uh, Matt, her husband, Matt Leonard, uh, now live. They lived in that until they moved out into the country. But um, yeah, I don't think he has any need to or any desire to. Um, you know, that's just my feelings, but I don't know for sure. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Mr. Mayor, this is Shannon. I guess I have more of a comment than a question. It's just, um... I'm uh, I'm sympathetic to Mr. Wendroth. I just feel like um, it's a very unusual neighborhood that they have. They're in somewhat of a bad spot in terms of not having all those amenities. And I understand why they don't and the complications of getting um, getting all the neighbors together to agree on something like that. On the other hand, I don't feel like I'm persuaded that the lot is worth less than the the county has valued it at this time. So that's my perspective. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's a tough uh, you know, it's it's a tough deal, but um, it it's worth something, you know. And it, what that's what we're here for, and uh, uh, to help try to decide that. So, any other comments? Questions? And when I first, uh, this is Steve Graham again, Mr. Mayor. When mm -hmm. I first saw the 23.5, I didn't think it was overvalued. Um, yeah, I understand the situation there, um, but I just, I guess, I, can, I don't have any basis for that other than my gut, you know, right. that it doesn't seem like it's overvalued relative to, okay. I guess. Uh, I know the curb and gutter and sewer and all that is an issue too. I understand that. Right. So, yeah. But uh, you know that curb and gutter has been an issue out there since uh, forever, and people have still lived there. They've built out there. You know, nothing real recent. I guess maybe their home that they used to live in is probably one of the newer ones that are out there. But people still, you know, uh, uh, for lack of better, Ed, I, Ed's brother uh, lives uh, lives out that way. Uh, not quite as far into the into the uh, jungle as as Jim is there, but uh, you know he's in that area. Um, so anyway, yeah, it, it's it's one of those things which you never know what is desirable to somebody, you know. And I wouldn't probably live there or buy or buy a lot there to build there, but who knows? Somebody might. All right. Any other questions, comments? Again, I will ask, does anyone want to make a motion on the property for James and Karen Wendroth on North 3rd Street uh, to either lower the value, leave the value the same at the 23.5 that, that was suggested, the proposed value, or raise the value? Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, this is Shannon. I'll move to uh, keep it the same. Carrie Johnson will second. Okay, Shannon one, Carrie two. Any other questions, comments? All in favor of leaving this property valued at the proposed $23,500, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Did we lose somebody? Opposed? Okay, this value uh, for the Wendroth property will remain at the 23.5. The next thing we have is the one that's attached, the one recommendation, and then there was three of them 
that Barb sent out to us, and I had it here before, that Barb sent out to us in a uh, an addendum to the meeting, and there was one change on that for the Caveney property, changing the proposed uh, recommendation, and I don't have that in front of me, but uh, to the 126 one. Um, I, uh, Lorna, can you explain? I tried to explain this last night. Steve raised a question in one of our other, other meetings about why we are having to deal with them in this manner instead of you just making those changes? If the taxpayer contacts us before 10 days prior to the meeting, we can just make a change. But if the meeting is within 10 days, we have to bring them forward to the board for approval. So it's all really a matter of timing. Yep, okay. Does anybody have any questions? Otherwise, I think they're pretty pretty straightforward. Like, like say this, they try to do that or with the other ones, uh, but you know, sometimes people we just can't come into an agreement of what uh, what it is, and that's why we have this board. So I am um, going so to. This is just Brad. So I just I just want a clarification. So the lower value represents an agreement that you had with the taxpayer that on the lower value, or is that just what you decided and we need to run with? Um, just curious we if that just if they agreed to it or if that's just your decision? Generally, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. For the, okay. And whenever we go out and we, um, we view, let's say the Gravelin property, we'll use as an example. They have some problems with issues that are incomplete and some, um, some issues with the home. So we go out and we take a look and we come back and we, um, we come up with a new value or we don't. And then we contact the owner and say, here's what we're going to come up with, and that's what we're going to propose to the council. And they then have the option of saying, great, you know, you make that recommendation, and I'll just wait for my letter. Or they can say, nope, I think it should be less than that, and I'm going to go ahead with my appeal appointment. So for these four um, taxpayers, we were able to contact three of them. Mr. Caveney, we had to leave a message on his answering machine yesterday, but we have not heard back from him. Okay. So the so other one of the happening with the assessment then. Or were what was that? I'm sorry, Brad, I interrupted you. What was that? Sorry, just so to clarify, the other ones were sat except for the one you didn't con weren't able to contact. The others were satisfied with the assessment then? Yes. Okay. And if they Thank were you. not, then we offer an appointment up to them. Okay. Thank you. So Lorna, the changing of the Caveney property from one the proposed uh one thirty to the one twenty six, that was something you just noted noticed in the file? when you were going over it again? Yes. Okay. yes, when we we do our work and then after we come back and then before the meeting, we always have another set of eyes double check things and someone picked up um, a little data entry issue with that so it, it reduced it more than we were going to. Okay, any other questions? And we can don't have to do these individually, we can do them all together. You, you do have to do them individually. We Absolutely. do? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. I thought we could do them all together. All right. With that being said, I stand corrected. Uh, the first one is the Gravelin property, which uh, at 620 North 3rd, um, and that's the one that came in our original packet. Is there anyone that would like to make a motion to approve the recommendation from the from the assessor's office? And we'll make a motion to approve. The well, we'll second. Add one. I didn't hear the second. I'm sorry. Shannon. And on to all in any other any questions on this one all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed the gravelin property will be notified of the change to two hundred fifty four thousand eight hundred dollars next one we have is on the addendum that was sent out uh, that hopefully everyone had a chance to look at and it is the Ryan Burr and Michelle Regnier property at 302 North Front. Any questions? This one is being proposed to be changed from 2011 to 197.8. Is there a motion to approve that recommendation? All, All second. Okay, did you get that, Barb? I got Steve second, but I didn't get who moved it. Emily. Emily one, Steve two. Thank you. Any questions? Yep. Any questions? All in 
All in favor of that proposed change to 302 North Front to 197.8, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That recommendation is approved. Next up, we have the Caveney property, which we just talked about, uh, at 1502 South 5th. The recommendation from the county is now proposed uh, 2020 estimated market value change from 148.2 to 126.1. Any questions, comments? Is there a motion to approve? Carrie Johnson will make a motion to approve. Emily will second. Okay, now any questions or comments? All in favor of that change, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That change is approved to 1502 South 5th Street to 1261. And the last one, Dave and Judy Kerr property at 1601 Old Minnesota Avenue. And for those not familiar, this is the old KFC. Uh, county is recommending a proposed change for the estimated market value from 993.2 to 927.8. Are there any questions? If not, is there a motion to approve that change? Ed will make a motion to approve. Shannon will second. Ed one, Shannon two. Any questions now? All in favor of that change recommendation, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That change is approved to the 15, or excuse me, 1601 Old Minnesota Avenue property to 920. Seven, eight. Lorna, Barb, anything we missed or anything we need to do? Just a motion All to good adjourn here. from my end. What was that, Barb? Just a motion to adjourn from my end. All right. I, I would have remembered that. Lorna, you're good? We're good. All right. Thank you. Yep. Is there a motion to adjourn? Ed will make a motion to adjourn. Those people um, grabbed, those, Emily seconded it. <laughs> Ed one, Emily two, all in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.